Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. Let's find out what's been on the hook. Well, I have other things that I'm working on, but I am working on the hook. So uh, this weekend I did a lot of work on a couple of projects and did some planning for the coming week. And I also did um, a little bit of a look back at the comments from Friday's video and I'm going to answer some of the questions that were there and talk about some of the suggestions that were made as well. So on my videos, I'm going to give a few people some shout outs for suggestions and also answer some questions just right on the video so that everybody will see those. Not everybody goes back and reads comments from the last video. First so. of all, we are going to talk about uh, some suggestions and questions. We're going to talk about whips and what I'm wearing and then we're going to move on to embroidery and to sewing and we have a giveaway at the end of this video so be sure to stay tuned. First of all, Log Cabin Stitcher remarks that she likes to hold her embroidery in the left hand and she likes to work her picture from the right to the left so that is a really good suggestion. Um, if you roll your fabric from the left to the right, and this is, we're talking about embroidery obviously here, um, you would stitch from the right to the left on your pattern. A lot of people start from the upper left corner and go to the bottom right corner. It just depends on your preference, I'm sure. But I could probably give that a whirl. I, I do plan to roll up all that fabric that I bought <laughs> for the big project that I'm doing and just put some uh, clothespins or some hair clips on it to hold it in place while I work so I can work and do my um, sewing in hand process. I'm going to try that. If it doesn't work, I'll do something different. Now, um, Pamela, who writes, says, I bought several beautiful balls of yarn, but the neck makes me nervous. And she didn't know about um, starting a pattern and not knowing what to do with the neck. The necks on my patterns are very, very easy. Um, you might find that some are more difficult than others. And if you look at the picture and you see that there's a lot of shaping there, you might want to try one that's more straight across. That way you only have to do two or three rows of decreases. They're very easy. You do them at the neckline. You don't do them over here. You do them at the neckline so that um, I walk you through it. I make it very, very easy. It's a conversational style pattern. And y'all who have bought those patterns, and many of you have, you know that I try to talk you through the process. And I try to say things in two or three different ways so because everybody doesn't learn the same. So you want to be sure that you explain things more than once and in a different way so that other folks can understand it the way they understand it. So that would be my answer to Pamela. Pamela, thank you for your comment. And Heidi, she uses empty uh, medicine bottles to hold her tapestry needles. What a great idea. I just threw away a bunch of those. <laughs> I don't know where they are, but I'll have to go dig those out or maybe just wait till the next one empties up and I will use that for my tapestry needles. I do have a couple of ways to keep them, but uh, thank you for the suggestion, Heidi. I appreciate it very, very much. Donna asks, how many hanks of Knit Crate did I buy? And I bought two in my subscription box. They are two of the ruby, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, one of my works in progress is the ruby colored Knit Crate Sugar Sport yarn. And I assume that's what you're talking about when you say ruby. But I do plan to put some longer short sleeves in this and also to do a nice finish around the bottom and of course the neckline. So I'll be into my third hank, but it won't take any more than that for the size I'm making, which is usually a 22 inch side seam to side seam, 21, 22, 23, right in there. And then I add an inch or two of ease and that's usually enough for just a basic summer sweater. So I have made several in the past that were much larger than that. And obviously they're going to take more yarn. So if your yarn's expensive, you probably don't want to put a lot of ease into your <laughs> into your fabric because it just costs more to make it. Or if you just want to and just go ahead and bite the bullet, buy another hank of yarn and go with it. But I think three would probably be enough for a small summer sweater that you're not going to make very, very long or very, very wide. And one more from Judy who used to own a needlework shop who has given me lots of great suggestions uh, in the past and in this particular comment. In this comment, it was about using a lap stand 
to do my big cross stitch project and I'm almost to the point where I'll probably need to do that. I'm just not really sure I want to try that. I think first I'm going to try sewing in hand and then if that doesn't work out I will buy a frame or a lap stand or something like that and work on it that way. I do plan to work on it. I'm not going to bail on that. Now one thing I wanted to say, uh, my husband watches these videos but he doesn't probably get this far into the video. <laughs> Till he moves on to something more interesting to a guy. I have decided he, my birthday's coming up and, I, and he asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I thought, hmm, I think I would like to have that Heaven and Earth Designs cross stitch embroidery project called Light of the World. And I just, I didn't really want to sink the money into it just yet. But if he's willing to buy me a birthday present, that's a substantial present. That's usually what he buys me, one thing every year that's really really nice. And he lets me pick it out. He doesn't surprise me anymore because really it's more fun to pick out your own present. And he doesn't know which design I would like or anything like that. So I thought that I would just ask him to buy me the kit. That's the pattern, the PDF. The, also, they, they send you the printed version, the, um, the thread that you need all the instructions that you need and it's all in one bag and you get that and then you start it whenever you're ready and I don't plan to start anything else now I say I don't plan to start anything else until I'm finished with my Lost No More embroidery project so I want to make sure that I don't bite off more than I can chew but if he's willing to buy that for me and I don't have to spend my money on it I think that would be a nice gift and also he would be part of the project and I always love for him to be part of the projects that I do. So that is kind of what I have on the horizon. I hope that I can work that out and get that in here but I think the way the website spoke about buying a kit it was two to three months to get one especially a really really large one like that. So it'll be a couple three months before I even see that and then I can unbox it and I want to show it to you. I'll show everybody when I get that. So that's if that all works out I will be back and show that to you uh, when it arrives. So now what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the stonewash sweater. Um, very very fun pattern to make, very easy and a lot of you have bought this pattern and I'm so glad you did because you're going to enjoy making it. It is a very easy pattern. I put a lot of ease in this. It looks like about uh, six inches of ease, not too much. It's not a boxy sweater. It's just a loose fitting sweater for summer and very, very comfortable. The sleeves are crocheted into the front and back fabric as I've shown you many times before. It's got a very simple edging around the top, around the bottom, and around the sleeves. So I made this with Coastal Cotton, which is a Loops and Threads product. It is called, this is the color purple. I did not use this. I used the navy color for this, obviously. But uh, I wanted to show this to you because it is a very easy yarn to work with. And it's not very expensive. It was 204 yards on the, on the ball. So uh, it goes a long way. I don't remember how many it took me. Three or four to make this. I would buy four and be sure that you know you probably have enough. Unless you're making a really large sweater, then you probably want to go with five or six even. And whatever you have left over, just make a cowl out of it or something small, a hat maybe. So this is the color purple. And again, this is called Coastal Cotton. It was fun to crochet and I found it um, very, very soft. And to wear it, I wear this quite often. It's a little bit heavier than the cotton fair that I've been using lately. And you all have seen those videos. If you haven't, you can go back and take a look. But cotton fair took center stage for quite a while and this uh, was crocheted before that and I really like it. It's a little bit heavy but it's not too much and you want to make a summer sweater out of it. It's not too heavy to wear. And also this I made, um, if you look at the pattern, I made it so that you don't have to wear a tank top under it. So um, I don't remember what size hook I used. It's, uh, I wrote it down. It's probably in the pattern. So I just wanted to tell you that this is a very comfortable sweater. Crystal is on vacation this week. She's taking a break and she said, I don't want to model anything. I'm going on a trip. So she left and so I'm here by myself saying, what am I wearing today? So that's what I'm wearing today. All right, on to the whips portion of the program. 
I had last week talked about my beautiful U yarn, and this is in my thumbnail if you clicked on that to watch my video, which I hope you did. Uh, this is the yarn that I was featuring in the picture, and it's a Lion Brand product. This is 100% acrylic, and last week I, I dug it out, and I thought, I need to finish that this year because this summer is a great summer for summer sweaters, as it always is, and I'm going to finish my summer sweater that I had done two rows on. <laughs> Not too many. So I sat down and I worked on it for a little while. I wanted to get some work done on it so I could show you what it looks like. This is done with an H hook and the H hook is 5.0 millimeter and here it is. I've done probably three inches. It's not too much but I think an H is going to be a good size for this. The holes are not too big and it's it's going to be uh, very very comfortable and a beautiful, beautiful color. The color on this actually is called K-N, C-A-Y-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, like the spice. Um, K-N is, uh, it's not really red. It's, it's a little bit of an orangey red, kind of an orangey red color, and um, it's unusual. But it's not a bright red, it's not a coral, it's just a beautiful color. So I'm putting some work in on that. I'm just gonna make an America tank type top, maybe the America T, which somebody called it the other day. The America T has the short sleeves. The America tank has the cap sleeve. So that way, um, you know, you can have a sweater and do all kinds of variations for yourself. And you can whip one up in no time. Once you make one or two, uh, they're not difficult to make. You can make them while you're watching Netflix. Actually, I have three skeins of this almost a thousand yards like I've said before so that should be plenty for me to work on so there goes my hook in there and I'm ready to go my second whip is the project that I was working on last week and it's turning out very nicely I I have completed the back of the sweater now this is made with the sugar sport ruby that I mentioned earlier in the program and this is the back of the sweater that I have finished. This is also sort of an America tank. Um, you can use any stitch you want in this is just a big square. And this is going to be the back of the sweater. Let me hold this up. I made it plenty long, so it's, it's way down here. And what I'm going to do is put a substantial binding on the bottom, a, a band around the bottom and maybe in a single crochet or something definitive down here at the bottom. And this will probably be a short sleeve sweater like this, so I can wear it more places. So this is what I finished so far, and then I started on the front. And I did uh, quite a bit of work on this this weekend. We watched a movie on Netflix, so I, I put some time in on it. And I don't even have a stitch marker in there. That's not good. Oh well. This is what I have done on the front so I have probably six inches done on the front so you can see that and those are just half double crochet and this is this is uh, crocheted with an eye hook that's 5.5 millimeter and very very easy to crochet I'm also using this little zipper bag and I have my yarn in there and the yarn just pulls right off it's very very easy to use so that's what I'm working on um, with this sweater. I should be finished with it in not too long. Once I have one piece finished, that's a real motivator to finish the whole project because I know I'm at least halfway, maybe even farther than halfway. So that's living in a Joe bag that I received a long time ago. Joe is back from vacation, by the way. She is the wonderful lady who makes project bags that are custom made for my viewers and subscribers and others, whoever wants one, and they are uh, very, very special. And she's been on vacation all week, and we've been texting back and forth. And I hope that she'll be back with a video very, very soon. I would imagine by Friday she'll have a video to me, and we will show that to you because the ladies that buy her bags like for us to show what they look like and all the different things that they have ordered that are different from someone else. So that will be uh, probably on Friday's video. Moving along to my next whip, my next whip is an embroidery project. Again, here is that pesky Le Jardin <laughs> embroidery piece. And I was thinking about this this weekend that, um, and this is different from cross stitch, okay? Y'all know the difference in this and cross stitch. 
These stitches are specialty stitches. Every one is different. I mean, there are several blocks with stem stitch, for example, several with the French knots and all that, but it is not cross stitch. It is not anything like cross stitch. <laughs> so it's just a different art form. And I was thinking about that this weekend. It is so much fun to do something different. And I look forward to starting my cross stitch as well. As soon as my fabric gets here, I'll start that uh, Lost No More project. But I can come down into my threads now. I'm almost to the finish line now. And let me show you what I've done. I did a lot of work on this this weekend. There's one side, and this is all, if you can't really see that, that's all satin stitch around that heart right there. That was, that took me over an hour to do. And then I've done some of the writing. I've done a little work on the French knots. I haven't finished those yet. And I've done some, I did the little watering can right there. Um, I did these little lines and outlined the floor. I, I don't know. I just did a lot of things. I was just sitting watching a movie and, you know, I wasn't stitching every second. Like when I crochet, I crochet pretty much every second when I'm watching something on TV. But um, when you're doing this kind of work, you have to pay attention and you have to get the right threads and you have to get, you have to thread your needle. So you have to look away from the TV. <laughs> So I don't always do it all at the same time. But this actually has some ribbon work as well. And I haven't gotten to that part yet. So I'm excited about that. That will be the last step. Uh, that will be the last step on this project. I am not using an embroidery hoop at all. There's one in my bag here. But I, I did a little bit of it with the hoop. And I decided, you know what? I really just like stitching in hand. So I'm putting that back up. And that will be a nice project to get out again uh, when I feel like it. I don't work on this every single day. I'm planning to do uh, a little bit of sewing this week. The discount on the Picnic Time sweater pattern that's out on my Etsy shop now that I released last Monday is uh, the discount is in effect until this Saturday. So you can use that pretty good size discount out on Etsy for any pattern you want. So you can pick a bunch of patterns if you've been looking at them and you want to buy them. You can do that at the pretty good size discount plus the, the new pattern is out there as well. Okay, now for giveaways. One thing I want to say is the person who won the crochet surprise box has not contacted me. I have sent several replies to her comment from two Mondays ago where uh, she had entered the giveaway and I selected her name the, the two Fridays later and apparently she didn't watch it or something happened and I have tried to contact her. Her name is Sandra Ray and I'm going to give her till Friday and if I don't hear from Sandra by Friday then I'm going to uh, draw another winner for the crochet surprise box at that point. I don't like doing that. And this is the first time that someone has just never contacted me, even though I have sent several uh, requests to her through her comment on that video. And she should be getting notifications on her, on her phone or iPad or her computer. But, you know, sometimes things happen and people just kind of drop out they don't look at their email or they you know they forget to you know answer their email or whatever it is um, I, I'm fine with that I just uh, I want Sandra to have it because she won it but if she doesn't really want it or she's just not showing up then I am going to select another winner this coming Friday so uh, Sandra be sure you send me your address before then so I can get that off to you in the mail um, now, for the giveaway this week, I've decided to do another giveaway. I'm just going to do these random. I don't. I may want to do one every week for three weeks and then not do one for a couple of weeks. So this week, as you probably guessed from last week, I'm giving away a project envelope. Now what this is, is something that you can use to house your embroidery projects. You can house a very small, kind of a small crochet project in here as well. They do expand quite a bit. Let me just show you that because um, that's why I designed it a little bit bigger than some I've seen. I like it a nice big project bag. And this does not have a square bottom on it. I might eventually make some of those. But right now, this is more of an envelope or a pouch. And as you can see, you know, it's a pretty good size pouch. And you can put a lot of items in there and then it just zips up. And you can throw it in your car or put it in your diaper bag or whatever you want to do with it and it's protected in there. So I really like that about it. Now I keep my 
uh, garden sampler in one of these and this is a little bit smaller one so I can keep this smaller project in there and for any huge projects I have I could always make a really large envelope but I'm not going to put those on my Etsy shop this is probably the size that I'll put out there when I start making some and I wanted to give this away to someone this week and um, just for fun I made two and I'm gonna keep one and I'm going to give one away. The back of the envelope is a heart pattern and I would like to make the keyword for this giveaway heart, H-E-A-R-T, heart. Just write the word heart in your comment and you will be eligible for the giveaway which will be on Friday, June 5th, which is Friday. So be sure to put your comment down below, use the keyword heart and you'll be um, in the list to pick from to win the giveaway, the project envelope. So join me next time to find out what's on the hook.